Well, welcome back. So there's nothing more annoying than going to a location to, to photograph uh, an object or a famous landmark and having loads and loads of people all over the shot and knowing that you've got to take the image back to the studio or home and having to do lots and lots of cloning. Well, I'm going to show you a technique today where we'll enable us to get Photoshop to do the majority of the work for us and to get rid of all those annoying people in shot. Now, acting as an annoying person today, I've got my son who's in the background doing something or other, I'm not sure what, probably vandalising. Um, and he's going to act as the annoying person in the shot moving around, which um, he's well trained to do. Um, so we'll set the camera up and we'll take you through it step by step. Well, welcome back. We're uh, now in the studio, and I've uh, got my shots together. I've processed uh, some of these raw files into JPEGs just to keep this uh, the resolution nice and small, so we're not uh, slowed down by huge files. Um, as I said uh, earlier, this this tutorial is um, done in uh, Adobe Photoshop CS3 Extended. The uh, scripts uh, scripts function uh, is only available in that version, unfortunately. Uh, but don't despair if you haven't got. CS3 extended. Um, I'll show you a free alternative solution a little later on in uh, in the video. Um, so basically, w w the idea behind these shots is if you're out on location, uh, maybe uh, let's say a, a famous landmark, and um, you've got tourists climbing all over your shot. Um, it can be very, very frustrating, especially if you don't want people in your images, uh, which I think a lot of us don't. Um, now, my solution is always, always, um, I'll go to these locations at, uh, at daybreak, at dawn, um, if the location's in the right area and the sun's in the right direction. That way, you can almost guarantee you're the only uh, person uh, out there shooting at a time in the morning, uh, apart from maybe a few street cleaners and a couple of dogs, uh, but you won't find many tourists about it at all. So uh, that's the best. That's your best solution to this. But if you can't for whatever reason, and uh, you've got to shoot when there's lots of people about, then this is one way of uh, getting round and getting rid of all those people out your shots without spending hours and hours in front of the computer. For this to work successfully, you need to take lots of shots. Now, um, I shot these on a tripod. Uh, this is actually a fairly easy one because I'm only really dealing with uh, just Gabriel in shot. But if you imagine the same scene with lots and lots of tourists about, then it can become a bit of a nightmare. So you need to shoot lots and lots of images. Now, the reason for that is uh, Photoshop needs to uh, have frames where there's not people covering uh, the background up. For instance, um, you've got a shot here of Gabriel stood in front of the platform. Um, we also need a shot in another frame of that uh, bit of the platform without anybody in, like this one. And the same with uh, up here, uh, there's a shot of him by the uh, by the little shelter here. We also need a frame without him or anybody in front of that shelter, so Photoshop's got something to work with. Um, you can like I said, shoot these handheld or with a tripod. Now the other th good thing about this uh, feature, it's absolutely great for removing image noise. So if you've got a bit of a low light uh, situation like this was, and you haven't got a tripod, don't worry about shooting at 400 or 800 ISO because, like I said, this is a very good way of removing image noise uh, from the image. In very basic uh, terms, the way this works is that uh, we run a script in Photoshop and it takes all the images we have open and combines them into a stack, uh, into a smart object, into one single layer. Uh, don't worry, I'll show you this in a minute. Um, it then runs the medium filter and what that does, it the medium filter will look at all the pixels in each of the frames and any pixels that are in the frame more than 50% of the time are left alone. So for instance, it'll look at all these pictures and it'll see that this sign 
and this uh, hut are, is in the image in the same place more than 50% of the time and it will leave it alone it will not touch it however any object like Gabriel that's uh, not in each frame more than 50% of the time will be removed so uh, this image is obviously in the, this frame here but in the next one is not so it'll it'll calculate and uh, remove those objects so hence anything that's static like the buildings the sign the bridge won't be touched um, whereas anything like tourists and um, people walking by cars are going to be removed so it goes without saying that this technique really only works with static objects so as I said I've processed my raw files and I've actually saved these out as JPEGs just for this tutorial normally I wouldn't do that I'd uh, use TIFFs uh, for myself um, so I process these out and now what we'll do is select all so command or control A and uh, we want to go to uh, file and open that's now uh, opened all my images uh, within Photoshop the next step is to go to file scripts and you'll see one here load files into stack now that will bring up a dialog box and um, you can just go add open files because we've already got them open and you've got two check boxes here attempt to automatically align source images we'll tick that and we're going to create a smart object after loading the files and then this may take quite a while depending on how many images you've got now I haven't actually shot that many because there's only Gabriel in shot but uh, if this was a crowded scene you want to shoot lots and lots of files um, images so uh, it will take quite a while uh, of course depending depending on your computer system etc etc so just click OK and then that will uh, do its job and then um, open up in Photoshop when it's completed now if you tick the box that says automatically align source images um, and you didn't use a tripod like I have your images uh, may appear uh, slightly overlapped at the edges when this processes so just bear that in mind you may need to go in with the, with the uh, crop tool and just crop the image down um, I don't anticipate that problem because as I said I use a tripod so the images aren't going to be that misaligned that filters now finished so if we double click on the uh, smart object that it's created we should be able to see all our images here all in the layers palette like so so we'll close that off the next step is to work the magic and remove all the uh, people or should I say Gabriel from our image so we go to uh, layer we go to smart objects stack mode and then we're going to median again depending on how many layers you've got the file size etc uh, this will take a little while to finish as if by magic there's our finished image without any people in shot now I would recommend zooming in and just checking uh, the picture at a hundred percent just to make sure there's no kind of ghosting uh, or anything any artifacts or anything because as I said if someone's static in in a lot of the frames you may get uh, like a ghosting effect and you'll need to go in with the uh, clone brush and the healing brush tool and uh, just clean those up but I think you'll agree um, that is a big time saver uh, if you're doing these type of shots and you've got a lot of people uh, in there that you don't one in uh, this is good to know that you can uh, literally take a series of pictures and uh, be able to uh, get rid of those without any manual labor now before I finish off I'll just tell you about this site I came across it's called snapmania.com um, I've got no affiliation to this site I've not even used the site to be honest with you I was just very conscious that this tutorial was very uh, uh, based upon CS3 extended and I know everybody doesn't own CS3 extended so I was looking for some alternatives for you to try and this one cropped up it looks pretty good it's free so uh, give that a try I'll put the URL up on the bottom of the screen now so you can jot that down check it out try it out and uh, see uh, what it's like so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and until the next time thanks for watching cheers